All right. Then th thank you very much. We will call the December meeting of the Wood County Board of Supervisors to order. Uh, it looks like the roll has been taken. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Trent? Wait. Yep. Are we waiting yet? Or? <laughs> well, they might be having problems hearing us. Brad, we've got you on. I don't know if you can hear me. Um, and then on your end, if you're not speaking, we need you to mute. But I can hear you. Can anybody hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Is there something going on? Are they going to be here long? All right. Let's try it. Brad, can you, this is Lance. Can you? No. Lance to Brad. <laughs> yeah, we're all in. Brad, can you hear me? Yeah, let me check. Let's see if we're having a good season. Okay, thank you. Right now, I'll go back on you. Okay. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right, this could get interesting. This is going to get fun. <laughs> All right, I think we called the meeting to order. We have taken the roll. At this time, I would call on Vice Chair Fisher to please come forward for the invocation. I'd ask the body to rise for that and then remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you please pray with me? Dear Lord, we come before you today and Lord, I just pray for peace. Lord, as uh, we live in interesting times and in times of great trouble, as I think about the last year from uh, the pandemic to, uh, to rioting, to civil unrest, to so many things, Lord. I pray for, for peace in our nation. I pray for peace across the globe. I pray for wisdom for us as we come here today to serve the constituents of Wood County. I pray that we would be, uh, we would be mindful of what we believe our duty to be, and I pray that we would support our convictions. I pray also, as I do every time I'm here, I pray for the less fortunate for those in Wood County who have little and are in need. May we always remember them. May we always seek to be charitable and gracious to all. I pray this in your name. Amen. Please join in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I want to thank all of those in attendance today. I want to thank you for following the masking ordinance that we know, a rule that we have in the courthouse with a resolution to follow today, but I want to thank you for complying with that. As, uh, there are choices as to which stores you go to, uh, you know where you decide to be out in the community, but there's only one courthouse, and we want to make sure that we keep our our staff and the ability to function uh, available. So I appreciate that. Uh, the first thing on our agenda today is disposition of minutes from the previous meeting, and I would entertain a motion to that effect by Wagner, second by LaFontaine. Any discussion? Any discussion? All in favor, please signify by aye. 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 Bry, Hamilton, Curry. Yes. Yes. I think we got it now. I think we got it. All right. That, that motion right. carries. Okay. Yes. Thank you. That motion carries. Thank you. It was unanimous. We'll go to excusals today. We have none. Uh, we do have three supervisors today joining us virtually. Supervisors Bry, Curry, and Hamilton. Um, we have no resignations today. We have no appointments or reappointments. But I'm guessing that the next thing on the agenda, we have some public comment. It looks like we have a few people here who may want to make a public comment. Uh, at that time, we'd ask you to come to the microphone. Um, if you would please identify yourself. Uh, the clerk has the three minutes up that's allowed for public comment. Uh, when we get to the end of that, I will pretty strictly enforce that. If you are two words away from the end of a sentence, we'll probably let you finish that. But uh, we'd like to stay within that, that time commitment. So, with that being said, at this time, I will open the floor up to public comment. Good morning, Mr. Chair, ladies and gentlemen. 
My name is Tim Date. I am not a Wood County resident, but I am a member of the leadership of Wisconsin Grand Sons of Liberty, which is a statewide constitutionalist group that works to promote constitutional rights and constitutional adherence. But being that the Second Amendment is an integral part of our Constitution, the Bill of Rights, it is of great interest to us. So I appreciate the opportunity to speak today in favor of the resolution for the Second Amendment. And I would like to specifically discuss the purpose of such a resolution. Some people have asked, rightly, what is the purpose of this type of resolution and what, if anything, does it accomplish? Truthfully, all such Wisconsin County resolutions are primarily symbolic. But, some, but symbols have both purpose and influence as they can be inspirationally powerful and have deep motivational meaning to the people. This resolution is a statement of principle that declared that the county supports the Second Amendment and opposes any further infringement on the constitutional rights of the people. These resolutions have become a trend now sweeping the nation. Wood County is not alone in this endeavor. 974 of the nation's 3,142 counties, roughly one-third, have enacted such a resolution over the last couple of years. Wisconsin's already seen 14 of her 72 counties enact a resolution to affirm Second Amendment constitutional rights over the last year, one county at a time. Why are these resolutions being passed? The Second Amendment is about more than hunting, self-defense, or sports shooting. We're conditioned to think that if tyranny were to come, it would most likely be in the form of the federal government, and we would look to our state government to protect us. But who would think the state government could be as tyrant? The people of California, Maryland, and Virginia thought that as well, and they have been contending with oppressive state governments actively infringing on their rights. If I were to have spoken to you six or seven months ago, you might have said, this isn't Wisconsin, I mean, this is Wisconsin, this isn't Virginia or California, and we don't have issues like they do. But the situation is changing. In this year alone, our Wisconsin state government has punished people for attending church. That's the freedom of religion. Gathering in groups, the right to peaceably assemble. Speaking out in objection, freedom of speech. Demanding government listen to the people, the right to petition government for a redress of grievance. And stated that the governor alone decides who is the press and may report from the capital. It's a freedom of the press. These examples are all five of the rights guaranteed by the First Amendment all infringed this year in this state. So I ask, who then protects the people when the state becomes a tyrant? If the state government won't protect our rights, who will? What is the next level of government we turn, we the citizens turn to? And the answer is the county, and this is why the resolution's in front of you. You are the next protector of our rights. It's why we have seen sheriffs and county boards across the nation refuse to carry out some of the orders of governors. Those sheriffs and county boards are placing the state and federal constitutions first and rightly so. Will you do the same? For most of you, the decision to run for the office of county supervisor is probably not very controversial. You had expectations of working on a budget, deciding which roads to repay next year, maintain staffing, all mundane but very necessary activities. You probably didn't foresee being in the midst of a constitutional issue, yet here you are. And I envy you as you have the opportunity to do something of significance yes, to be reserved. <clears throat> A little bit more to preserve. Uh, preserve American liberty and rights. No, we hope you'll take a chance to do this. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'd also ask the group to refrain from applause, refrain from any reaction, whether you agree or disagree with the statements, um, because we could have people both sides of the aisle here. Uh, please continue. Next. I'm Lynn Deary from Wood County. Can I have my time back? Claiming the time. Claiming the time. Are you doing one to over? We're at three minutes. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, this board spends a large amount of time carefully crafting and managing a budget. In this troubled year, fiscal surety is difficult to maintain. That said, I can show you the substantial impact of the Second Amendment on the Wood County economy. In Wood County, there are five gun ranges, five gun clubs, nine gunsmiths and manufacturers, eight gun stores, nine big uh, box retailers, 
selling firearms and ammo, and 51 federal firearm licensees. Some of the businesses, business entities have more than one of these functions, and the total of unique business entities in the county related to the Second Amendment is 68. This amounts to several hundred employees, and the various taxes from these businesses as well into the seven figures when you, cannot, when you count property taxes, plus payroll, income, inventory, sales, or any other tax revenue generated from the people living or visiting Wood County and enjoying the Second Amendment rights. This lawful Second Amendment activity is integral to the county's economy and should be protected. There is another necessity of this resolution. In the wake of the chaos caused by the pandemic, by the civil insurrection striking so many of our cities, there is inevitable concern over the threat to our rights. The Second Amendment has long, has long been held to be the insurance policy for all the rest of our constitutional rights. It puts teeth in the Bill of Rights. If there was ever an argument in favor of the Second Amendment, it is, has been the events of the year of 2020. We have seen rioting, looting, burning, murder, and mayhem in our cities, including Wisconsin. 46 Wisconsin cities have, been pro have seen protests in 2020, and some of the protests turned violent riots, including the cities of Kenosha, Wauwatosa, Madison, Milwaukee, Green Bay, have seen. Law and order are breaking down, yet groups call for defunding the very civil institutions that protect and maintain a civil society. On the federal and state level, elected leaders are proving unable to effectively and demonstratively govern. Cherished ideals of free speech, due process, the rule of law, legal justice, and the freedom of conscience are under attack by mobs and factions opposed to our form of government and to our political, economic, social, and legal institutions. This void must be filled and the line must be held. To whom can the people turn? The counties are the next line of constitutional defense, and that is why nationwide county supervisors are now taking up these resolutions to draw the proverbial line and state that the people insist on preserving our rights. A Second Amendment and resolution demonstrates to the people of the county that their board of supervisors stands with the people in the Constitution. It makes evident that the supervisors take their oaths of office seriously and publicly declare their intent to uphold them. Pandemic chaos be damned. The main question often asked is why the county boards of supervisors need to spend time on such resolutions. These resolutions are necessary and timely wake up call to the state governments to obey the federal and state constitutions and that elected leaders must preserve and respect the rule of law. We are free citizens of these United States and we intend to remain free with our time. constitutional rights intact. The better question to ask is, is there truly a more important function I have to enforce for a governing the, body? I have to enforce the limits. Well, it's up to you guys. We have a lot of people who want to make public comment. If you'd like to relinquish your time and have one person speak longer, I'd be more than happy to do that. But we, like I said, we have rules. So, Mr. Heiser. Thank you. My name is Tom Heiser, County Grand Rapids. Mr. Chairman and members of the Wood County Board of Supervisors, there are two items on the agenda that I would like to address. I come here today in support of making Wood County a Second Amendment Sanctuary County. The Second Amendment has come under attack in our country several times, and we need our local grassroots elected officials to stand up for the Constitution. I spoke to Sheriff Becker on the phone this morning. He wished he could be here, but he is ill, and he said that he does support this resolution. So I'd like to put that on record that he gave me authorization to mention that for him. It has been said that a constituent, that if a constituent has concerns on an issue, they should contact their respected elected officials. At this time, I'd like to request that my county board supervisor, Bill Clendenning, and the rest of the county board to vote in the affirmative for this resolution for Wood County to be a second amendment sanctuary county. On a separate matter, I understand that the county board is also going to act in a resolution to require masks in all county buildings. You do have control of these buildings, and I respect that. I ask that you require masks to be worn to please provide a mask that protects the person wearing it. I have shared the following information on the uh, phone on the box of blue masks that many of you wear. And I'm going to quote from that box. When properly worn, it it reduces potential contact to the wearer to fluids, but does not eliminate the risk of contracting any disease or infection. Yeah. This is on the side of the box 
that this mask right here came in. Um, the country has gone from needing, from not needing masks, as initially reported by Dr. Fauci and Speaker of the House Pelosi. We're told to wash our hands and wear a mask. To wash your hands, wear a mask from social distance. And to stay home to flatten the curve. I don't see that happening. As of yesterday's information, Wood County has a 0 .001 fatality rate for COVID-19. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Next, additional public comment. Good morning. Uh, my name is Mike Geary. Uh, I'm here to address uh, from our last board meeting. There were certain uh, people present that did not believe that there were any kind of Second Amendment abuses in this country. I'm just going to list a few, so bear with me for a few moments. Uh, during the antebellum period, many slave states permitted black freedmen to own firearms. But on occasion, these states would renege and carry out statewide confiscation raids on blacks. As just one example, in Florida, these raids were performed in 1825, 1833, 1847, 1861, and 1941. In 1838, the state of Missouri ordered the disarming of all Mormons and the confiscation of their weapons. Governor Lil, Lil Burn Boggs issued Executive Order 44 to exterminate a community of disarmed Mormons who were then massacred at Hans Hill Mill. In 1890, the U.S. Army attempted to confiscate weapons from the Lakota Sioux at Wounded Knee in South Dakota. that resulted in the massacre of 297 men, women, and children. In 1942, the U.S. federal government conducted a disarming of 100,000 Japanese Americans, 11,507 German Americans, 1,881 Italian Americans, and Americans of Czech, Romanian, Bulgarian, and Hungarian descent <coughs> prior to their detention and internment camps. In 1988, in Operation Clean Sweep, the Chicago Police Department and Chicago Housing Authority searched every public housing unit in the city without a warrant to seize all firearms. In 1991, New York Day Mayor David Dinkins got the city council to ban assault weapons and using a 60, 1967 database of registered long guns, Dinkins had the state police go door to door to look for weapons. 2001, using a registration database, the city of Chicago once again began door to door warrantless confiscation raids on residents, including, ironically, police officers. 2005, during Katrina, Hurricane Katrina, New Orleans Mayor Ray Nagins banned all weapons and the police and National Guard were used to go door to door to seize weapons without warrants. In response, Congress passed the Disaster Recovery Personal Protection Act of 2006 prohibiting mass confiscations. Citizens who have had their weapons seized successfully sued to recover the weapons, but the city of Orleans to this day has not returned to Mexico. Uh, confiscated weapons. <laughs> my my point here was just to point out the fact that it was it was stated in our last meeting that since the 1790s there's never been any abuse of this amendment, and this just goes to prove that that fact is is, is wrong, and people need to be educated on that fact. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joe Humphrey. I reside in Richfield Township, just up the road, and I'm here in support of this uh, uh, resolution to back the Second Amendment in Wood County. Uh, I do wish to say at the outset, I resent the fact that you're even considering requiring masks. Masks do nothing to prevent the spread of the virus. Educate yourselves. Okay, I'd like to go back to some history that Mike has provided. On April 19th, 1775, the Massachusetts Military Governor General Thomas Gage sent 700 armed British troops to small towns of Lexington and Concord to secure private stores of powder, shot, and flints, and muskets. It was an act of gun control. Specifically, it was confiscation. The American people resisted, and the American Revolution ensued. 
keep that in mind. On October the 2nd, 1835, and this is near and dear to my heart, it's a native barn, Texas son, the Mexican president Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana sent a company of dragoons to the small Texas town of Gonzales to take a cannon that the townspeople used to ward off Comanche raids. It was an act of gun control, specifically confiscation. The people refused to give up the cannon, and the Texas Revolution became a shooting war, and we sold tons and tons of t-shirts that said, come and take it. <laughs> On April 12, 1861, the government of the state of South Carolina, at that time in rebellion to the United States, demanded that the U.S. Army turn over Fort Sumter and its cannons and rifles to the government of South Carolina. It was an act of gun control, specifically confiscation. The fort's commander, Major Robert Anderson, refused, and the South Carolinians fired upon the fort, and the U.S. Civil War became, became a shooting war. Again, keep that in mind. Each of these North American examples, the government attempted to seize weapons belonging to the people, the people refused, a revolution commenced, and that the aggressor government lost the, the war and the territory and these people retained their arms. The teacher who has erroneously claimed there was never been an infringement of the Second Amendment, we submit to you these facts in evidence. Thank you. Additional public comment? Good morning, my name is Gene Noonan. I want to speak in support of the resolution. Uh, I've been an NRA member most of my life, and I think you need only travel across state lines to, to get a pretty quick understanding of the East and West Coast elites and the cultural war that's coming our way, folks. <laughs> um, you can't travel with a handgun into California. You can't go into Canada with a handgun. A lot of people don't know that. If you own a handgun in Canada, you have to register it. You're going on to the gun range for that day. If you come back that day and you stop at the restaurant, you can be thrown in jail. So the assault is coming, and I'm here to tell you that. Um, you know, we travel, like I say, across state lines a lot with guns, whether we're hunting or, um, and to do it lawfully is interesting. I mean, I have to case my gun to go through Minnesota and Illinois, and the rest of the way out west, I can stick it wherever I want to put it, loaded and such with my concealed carry permit from here. So, again, I think resolutions like this are really important. Um, there's a lot more support than what's just in this room for the Second Amendment. Um, and I, I just, again, want to speak in support of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. My name is Jeff Rules. I'm a Wood County resident. And I want to finish the part of what Lynn was saying to the, to the last part of the paragraph that she didn't need to finish. But it says the main question often asked why the county boards of supervisors <clears throat> need to spend time on such resolutions. These res resolutions are necessarily and timely wake up call for the state governments to obey the federal and state constitutions and that elected leaders must preserve and respect the rule of law. We are free citizens of these United States and we intend to remain free with our constitutional rights intact. The better question to ask is there's truly and more important function for the government body at any level of government that the robust, robust and spirited defense of the people's liberty. After all, that is why our state and federal constitutions were written. Thank you. Additional public comment? Is there any additional public comment? Good morning. Uh, my name is Andrew Request. I'm uh, a resident of Millinor. I wasn't planning on even coming today, but I felt being here was necessary. I want to talk about some of the plans for the possible upcoming administration. A Biden Harris administration would turn the normal everyday gun owner into a felon overnight. If those people chose not to comply, this is according to the Biden and 
uh, Harris campaign themselves. I'll explain. The Biden Harris administration will regulate any semi automatic firearm that is designed to hold 10 or more rounds. <clears throat> they would also regulate any magazine able to hold 10 or more rounds in it as an additional NFA item. Well, what all of that means in real world terms is that anyone who currently owns or plans on buying a handgun or other semi automatic magazine fed firearm is now subject to a $200 tax stamp on the firearm, a $200 tax stamp on each magazine, additional costs for an NFA background check, and a wait period of up to a year or more. So let's give an example. Let's say someone currently owns, and I mean currently, one basic stock Glock 19 handgun. Out of the box, it would cost an additional $600. One gun, two magazines, three NFA items. And force that as an NFA item. Once it's registered as an NFA item, it would be required that the location of the firearm storage within the home be reported to the ATF. As it stands now, the ATF can inspect NFA items in the enemy's home. If a home failed to comply, he or she would be committing a felony, the sentence of which could be up to 10 years in prison. This effectively would turn the average law-abiding gun owner into a criminal by act of non-compliance. The majority of the people uh, that do not know or understand the policies that will possibly be put into effect. Um, it's in my humble opinion, if, they're, if they are the average and otherwise quiet citizen will be heard. The Second Amendment was not written to limit state powers. The right to protect yourselves against tyrannical overreach was granted to all men after by God, not the government. Amen. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Give an additional public comment. Anything. I apologize. I will be emotional. That fired me up. I wasn't going to talk, but it, it needs to be said. Um, we've seen a lot happen this year. Cities burned down. We sat quietly by, and we show up. At meetings like this, and we get up here, we talk peacefully because that's what respectable Americans do. Well, we're getting to the point where we're not going to be peaceful much longer. And maybe some of us don't have the ball to here to say that, but I do. We're organized. We're very organized, and we're starting to get very ticked off. And we would much rather work with our local governments, with our local law enforcement, than against it. But if forced to, if forced to choose, we will take our liberties back. We've given way too much. We've lost things that we will never get back. We've lost liberties we will never get back, no matter how we fight. And this is the right way to fight. We're not smashing windows, we're not burning stuff down. We're here talking to you. This resolution, I say get rid of the mask one too, would be a good extension of the hand to the proud patriotic Americans in central Wisconsin to say you have our backs, that you're supporting us so we can work with you and with the local government instead of against, instead of against. We need the support. We need to come together. We, we don't need unity from the left after four years of Russian collusion. He should have never been president. Now all of a sudden they have a uh, sketchy election and now we're supposed to just unify? And then you're gonna muzzle us and muzzle our children, which is just absolute abuse. Putting these masks on these children and the oxygen demand of the lower brainstem, don't even get me started. <laughs> Hypercapnia, what happens when you rebreathe your CO all day long is not good for the brain. No. Oh. And so these resolutions put before you, like I stated, is an extension of the hand to the proud patriot Americans of central Wisconsin that you want to work with us and not against us. Thank you for your time. Thank you. additional public comments. Supervisor uh, Mr. Chairman, if there isn't any other comment, I do have from a District 17 resident a comment he wanted read into the record. So I may do that at this time. Without objection, yeah. My name is Leo Thomasgard. I have resided in the village of Port Edwards since 1976. I retired after a 34-year teaching career in social studies in the Pusa Public Schools. 
I currently am the Vice President of the Port Edwards School Board and serve as the Secretary of the Port Edwards Police and Fire Commission. I am an Eagle Scout, was the Scoutmaster in Port Edwards for four years. I served in the U.S. Army Reserve for six years and was honorably discharged as a Staff Sergeant. I am not a hunter, but own both handguns and rifles, mostly used over the years for target shooting. I have no problems with proper, safe, responsible use of reasonably normal firearms for legitimate legal purposes. I wish to voice my strong opposition to the proposed Sanctuary County Resolution on your agenda for the December meeting. I believe it is a waste of time and energy on your part to even consider a proposal that your own corporate counsel, Mr. Kastenholz, advised you in his November 10th memo that, quoting now, such an ordinance would not be legal or enforceable, and I can't amend its language so as to make it legal and still accomplish the purpose of the drafters. This proposal is only for show and accomplishes nothing except to arouse emotions and create division at a time when there is, so, there is far too much division already. A county simply cannot choose to ignore state or federal laws that supersede its authority. As those providing leadership and direction for the citizens of Wood County, you need to prioritize your time and energy toward issues and decisions having real impact and merit. This proposal has neither. It does nothing and can accomplish nothing. It is totally without merit and should not have come to the floor for a vote. Citizens of Wood County are dying of COVID almost every day. <laughs> you know, I really appreciate, if we wouldn't have the reaction, it, it really diminishes the case you're trying to make. Uh, so I appreciate, you know, they remain silent during your public comment. I appreciate the same consideration. People are out of work. People are wondering how they will pay their rent and mortgages. Folks worry about being able to somehow safely see their families for Christmas and you decide to spend time on this. Be leaders, do the responsible right thing and vote against this nonsense and get back to serious matters. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Chairman. Is there any other public comment? Is there any other public comment? All right, then, seeing none, I, there's two things I'd like to do. The first thing I want to <coughs> clarify, uh, and it's not being in front, the, because some of them alluded to the, if you want to call it the masking uh, resolution that comes before you, pertains only to county-owned buildings. This is not a county-wide one, which I've heard from some people, saying how can you require people out in the public. It's not. It's in the courthouse here, uh, and basically to try to slow any spread as possible. Secondly, the uh, resolution, page 241 in your packet, dealing with the Second Amendment, um, page 241 without objection from the body and due to the number of people that we have in the room, I'd like to bring that to the front of the packet for action now. Is there any objection to that? Supervisor Clendenin. Yes, I would check. I think since they have to listen to us, we have to listen to them. They have to listen to us and how we do this. I do a check. Can I take it to a vote, please? All right, I'm going to do this by, uh, I'll listen for a second and then I'll do this by vote. One of my considerations with the number of people that we have in the room the first question I was asked today is if I'd like to move those people to a separate room and appear virtually, and I said I, I don't know that that accomplishes what the public would like to do here. Uh, Supervisor Ashbeck. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. With the number of people in this room here, with the virus the way it is, I just so go to the amendment that, and, and they have, and have it over with because that's the people go home then, so that we don't need all that. Breathing in here. That was my consideration here. So let me just ask this. Uh, supervisors, all in favor of moving this to the, to the front of the agenda, please signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 Okay, so I think, if I'm correct, is there anybody who objects other than Supervisor Clendenning? Hamilton. Supervisor Lightham objects also. So that carries. We're going to move this to the front of the packet. Uh, I would ask the clerk to please, this is page 241, we're going to wait a minute. Apparently we're having a little trouble here with the system we're again. Trouble again. Mm -hmm. 
while they're working on that, I, I do appreciate the fact that the public shows up. I do appreciate the input. Uh, it's been stated a couple of times that's what local government is all about. So we do appreciate your being here. Do appreciate the comments. Don't always appreciate technology. I hate it. <laughs> Sorry. I know that works. Technology. Well, while we're working on that, I have no acknowledgments or recognitions today either. So when we get through this, we'll, we'll move into the packet. I think it's the metal plate in my head. Okay, Trent, I'd ask you to please then read the resolution when you're ready. This will be resolution 20-12-1 to recognize the importance of the federal constitution's second amendment right to bear arms and to encourage the state and federal governments not to abridge that right through legislation or rulemaking. Fiscal note, none. Okay, and I have a motion by LaFontaine. I have a second by Super Supervisor Zerflu. Is there discussion? Any discussion from the floor? Dis Supervisor Clendenin. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> this, this has been before this county board. Now, this, this will make the sixth time. It, it, it started in the safety committee. And three of the people that are members of the safety committee are members that, that authorized this resolution. I only heard one of those people ever speak for or against or even considering this for, for the county board. And after that, that was the first time it was, is that it was not on the agenda. The second time it went to the safety committee, which is the sheriff's department, and which I did hear him say he is for this yep. at that meeting. And at, at that meeting, nobody spoke up. And then it went to the full county board, and the full county board decided that this should be uh, taken to the Judicial Legislative Committee. So we did. We got legal opinion on this. We had a room full of people. And we, we heard everybody that wanted to be heard. And I was criticized for letting them go on so long. But we did. We did it. And a motion was made, and it wasn't seconded. Another motion was made, and it was uh, seconded, and a vote was taken on it, and it was a tie vote. Now what can we do? We had people that also that are on there that were attending that meeting that are on this committee on this uh, resolution as sponsors, they never said a word. And, and, and I begged one of them that had a resolution. I said, why don't you come forward so these people can do it? That was not done. So now this is the sixth time. And the, and the people in charge, I say, why don't you go down to Madison, sounds like you got them people on your side, and have a statewide, have the state do this. Why well, come here and tell the city of Wisconsin Rapids, the city of Marshfield, the town of Grand Rapids, that I don't care what you do about gun control, the county is not going to, it's going to do it and you can't do anything. Now somebody's gonna say, oh well counties, uh, cities don't have a chance. There is one city, I believe it's Merrill, that has a, an ordinance against this. I think there's seven states that have it. Why not go down to the state legislator? We got a future legislator that's on this resolution name. Take it down there. See what the state's got to say. Thank you. Further discussion? Is there any further discussion? Supervisor Lightman? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll, I'll make this brief because I've spoke on it before, and I think most people know how I feel. I've read the resolution over, I don't know how many times, probably more than 10, and it, it does bother me because the Second Amendment, nobody is questioning. This is a large nation, 330 million people. Uh, duly noted from what residents have said, there have been problems, but think about it. 229 years, 
we are sitting here today, the Second Amendment is intact, we are functioning as a nation. Problems? Yeah, problems here and there. But two world wars, a civil war, countless recessions, depressions, um, I do not see the seriousness of the challenge to the Second Amendment. I'm going to be voting no when we vote on this. Supervisor Christian. Thank you. I, uh, believe it or not, I, uh, prior to 2020, I never even held a gun. Um, I have never held a gun prior to 2020. Um, never cared to carry a gun. It was never an interest of mine. Um, quite frankly, I do believe in the Constitution, and I believe in supporting the Constitution. And Supervisor Lightman makes some fair points in the sense that the Constitution is intact, but the reality is this resolution is in place to support the Constitution. We are trying to pass this in order to make a statement to the state of Wisconsin, to the federal government, that Wood County does support the Constitution and the Second Amendment, which we believe is the right of people to bear arms. I would encourage people, and some people in this room might not like this, but if you do not want, if you do not like what the Second Amendment says, you have every right to fight that. But for me personally, in 2016, in 2018, and now in 2020, I took an oath of office. And in that oath of office, I swear to support the Constitution of this great country, the United States of America. And I took an oath to support the Constitution of the state of Wisconsin, which I love. The Second Amendment is in the United States Constitution, in the state of Wisconsin Constitution, we talk about the right to bear arms. To me, an oath is a promise, and I will be voting for this because I want to be a person who keeps his promise. I promised to support the Constitution. I will be voting yes. Thank you. Further discussion? Further? Supervisor Wagner. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let me get something straight right up front. I own a gun. I'm not, I am not anti-gun at all in any way, shape, or form. Listen, I want to talk for a second about Mr. Fisher's comment that he just, just made, that you know we took an oath to support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the state of Wisconsin, and their laws and the laws and the rules of the, and the ordinances of Wood County. And I will do that. I pledge to my fellow supervisors, I will support the Second Amendment and the, uh, and the Constitution of the United States. I will do that. The problem is, I think this resolution before us goes far beyond that. It asks us to resist lawful changes made by either the federal or the state government if, for some reason or another, someone decides their tyranny or they represent tyranny. I don't believe that's the case. I believe in the federal system. I believe in what's going on with the uh, with the separation of powers, and I will support the lawful, the lawful orders of the, the uh, commander in chief, as I did in the military too, as most most of us who were in the military pledged to also. And I will back up the Constitution, but I don't believe this resolution will do anything for us, and so I'm going to vote against it. Thank you very much. Is there any further discussion? Thank you, Sir President. Further discussion. Any further discussion? I have not seen or hearing any. I would ask you to please vote. Supervisor Bry. Supervisor Bry. No. No for Supervisor Bry. Supervisor Curry. Supervisor Curry, no. Supervisor Hamilton. Oh. Yes. Supervisor Hamilton is a yes. Okay. 
So you punched all those in. So that resolution carries 12. What do we have there? 12 to 7. 7. Do we have any abstentions? No. No. I can't see that part. The resolution carries on a 12 to 7 vote. Thank you. I'm going to give just a second for those the supervisors. Let me give a second. Well, you can come speak. I was like just going to ask that we take a short three-minute recess. I was going to give the opportunity for everybody to leave before we ask. So if you want to take three-minute recess, you're very kind. And I know we try to do this all the time. I want to thank you for your decorum during that discussion. You know, that's the one thing that we preach everywhere that I have the opportunity to speak in front of a number of county boards throughout the state uh, on an annual basis. This has been a little different year. But the one thing we always talk about is that civility, that decorum, uh, and I think our board probably shows more than, I'm going to say all, certainly most, not all. So I thank you for that. And as a large group, uh, it's not easy. It's sometimes it's tough to contain uh, their enthusiasm. I guess I'll leave it at that uh, as we move forward. Um, I'm going to make one other comment before I get into the packet here. I, I had a uh, counties association, we had an executive committee meeting and a full board meeting last week. Thursday and Friday. And one of the things that was interesting, and I just wanted to share it with you, is uh, you know, we were afraid in Wood County we'd be down in sales tax, which would uh, affect our budget greatly. All but about three counties in the state are actually up in sales tax. But there's a caveat to that, and, and this really brings us home. Uh, our forward analytics group put together some work. Income in the state of Wisconsin this year, despite the pandemic and despite the layoffs you heard about, was actually up 5.8%. Mm. It was up 5.8% because there was an $18 billion infusion of income into the state of Wisconsin through various programs. Without that, and we probably won't have that next year, without that, there would have been a 6% decline in income and probably spending, uh, you know, would, would somehow follow that. So, although we came through this year fairly unscathed because of the federal dollars uh, that were allocated at the state level, uh, we are not um, out of the woods. Of all the, of the 50 states, there were only 14, however, that were worse than us economically. So we are at pretty close to the bottom of where it's at, and I think that's going to come home this coming year. And I only mention that as we go forward in, in what we're looking at in this coming year. So uh, hopefully it continues to get better, hopefully with the vaccine out and things like that happening, economies and businesses will return more closely to normal. Uh, but they anticipated more than 1,000. Wisconsin restaurants will not reopen after the first of the year. Uh, that's a lot of the economy, a lot of employees, uh, and those most probably greatly affected based on income. So something to keep in mind, something as we go forward, as we look at uh, you know revenues and spending. And I just wanted to share that because that really hit home uh, in those meetings. All right, to the to a happier note. <laughs> Back to the pack of referrals for December. Um, those went to the appropriate people. The um, the note uh, from the family of former Chairman Gordy Stargard uh, thanking us for the resolution on his service and then the resolution from Oak Park County being the further proper committees. All right, let's get into the packet, page six. The uh, public hearing for the budget on the operations committee of Tuesday, November 10th, that was page six. Pages seven and eight, the operations committee of December 1st, page nine and 10. Uh, Office of the County Clerk. Uh, would the County Clerk like to say anything having gone through the election? Or? I look good for 20, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I aged a little bit <clears throat> through that process. I, I have a question. Are we supposed to use this now? Yeah, that yeah, would help. Okay. Supervisor Rose. Is, um, so it's on. It's on one. I don't have to do anything. Yep. Is it on? Okay, so I want. Are there any elections scheduled for 2021? There is one for sure, which will be on April 6, um, which is our normal spring election, which includes most all of our township, villages, and cities, also school boards. We do not know yet if there will be a primary in February, but I'm thinking there probably will be because there's seven people running for state superintendent of public instruction. So the prop, I'm thinking we'll probably see a statewide primary. So two for now. Thank you. I just want to give him a chance because uh, in our county, things went real well. Uh, and I tell you, our results get posted faster than most counties around the state by days, oftentimes. So 
uh, congratulations, Trenty, and your staff down there, and those people who work elections around the county. Pages 11 through 15, monthly update from Human Resources. On page 16, the Treasurer's Report. Employee Wellness on 17. And that brings us to the first resolutions in the pack. We have four budget <laughs> resolutions here, I believe. They're all budget reconciliation amendment type resolutions. Is there any objection to taking those together? Is that four of those or three of those? I think four. Four of those. Yeah, is there any objection to taking the budget amendments together? Okay, Trent, if you would please read those four. This will be resolution 20-12-2. <laughs> to amend the 2020 budget for Human Services, Norwood Health Center, and Edgewater Haven programs for transfer of available appropriations to functions where actual expenditures are recorded. Fiscal note, no additional cost to Wood County. The additional appropriations needed for transfers in are available and are not anticipated to be spent in the approach appropriations to be transferred out. The adjustment to the budget totals $608,000. Resolution 20-12-3, to amend the 2020 budget for Humane Officer for the purpose of funding higher than anticipated expenditures. Fiscal note, to transfer $5,500 from available balance in contingency to Humane Officer. At the time of this request, funds available in contingency are $435,000. The adjustment to the budget totals $5,500. Resolution 20-12-4, to amend the 2020 budget for UW Extension projects for the purpose of funding higher than anticipated expenditures. Fiscal note, to transfer $6,500 from available balance in fund balance to UW Extension project. The adjustment to the budget totals $6,500. Resolution 20-12-5, to amend the 2020 budget of various highway functions listed below for additional expenditures of $1,112,239 not anticipated during the original budget process. Fiscal note, no additional cost to Wood County. The adjustment budget totals $1,112,239. Thank you. And I have a motion by Supervisor Wagner, a second by Supervisor Fire. Is there any discussion on these resolutions? Supervisor Zerflu. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm just, my numbering was off uh, with trends. Like I had on here, it said uh, highway resolution was uh, one dash four and it came up as number five it's because, we, because item eight dash one was moved forward that's sanctuary thank you mr chairman number one i stand corrected by the county clerk again <laughs> <laughs> i was wondering too i just didn't ask the question <laughs> all right any discussion any discussion any meaningful discussion all right <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were civil. <laughs> Hamilton, yes, Brian. Yes. And Supervisor Curry. Yes. Thank you. That resolutions, those resolutions pass unanimously. Thank you. Next two resolutions in your packet from the same committee uh, are the uh, exception of uh, offer of sale on tax deed properties. Any objections taking those together? All right, without objection, Trent? This will be resolution 20 12 6 to accept the offer of sale of tax deeded property. Fiscal note. Offered amount minus real estate taxes, special charges, delinquent utilities, special assessments, publication fees, and tax deed expense net us a gain of $111,891.15. Resolution 20-12-7, to accept the offer of sale of tax deeded property. Fiscal note, the offered amount minus real estate taxes, tax deed expense, delinquent utilities, and special charges incur a loss of $13,597.79. Okay, thank you, and I have a motion by Supervisor Fire, a second by Supervisor Wagner. Any discussion on these resolutions? Any discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Hamilton, yes. Thank you, Brad. Brian? And Supervisor Curry? Yes. yes. Thank you, gentlemen. And those resolutions also pass unanimously. Thank you. All right, back to the packet. Page 27 and 28, Health and Human Services Committee meeting of November 19th. 
pages, well, 29 through 31, uh, Board of Directors of North Central Community Action, page 29 through 31, Supervisor Rosa. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I uh, just wanted to uh, notify the board of a thank you note that I got from someone who has a family member in Edgewater Haven. I will take this to the Health and Human Services Committee on Thursday night, but I just wanted the full county board as well as the members of the public to know that there is great appreciation for the work of Edgewater Haven, our nursing home, in keeping the residents and staff as safe as they can. Uh, this individual was very, very complimentary of the staff and what they're trying to do to continue to allow um, family members to Skype and FaceTime and do all of that. But I just wanted people to know how what a good job our Edgewater Haven staff is doing and uh, they are to be commended during these challenging times for doing such a great job. Thank you. Thanks, ma'am. Back to the North Central Community Action 2931. Any questions there? Our Wood County Health Department, 32 through 35, and again, uh, extraordinary job that they've been doing, uh, working a tremendous amount of hours, dealing with everything imaginable, and most of which was unimaginable, if you would have thought where we were last, you know, February or March, and where we still are today. Uh, the report from the Wood County uh, Human Services Department, beginning with Director of Rulings on page 36, and running through page 40, 36 through 40. Uh, the Edgewater Haven update uh, from Marissa Letter on 41 through 43. Any questions there? Veteran Service Officers Report on 44 and 45. And then that brings me to the next resolution in the packet on page 46. Okay. This will be resolution 20-12-8 to employ Wood County residents to take actions to stop the spread of deadly COVID-19 virus. Fiscal note, no, in, no fiscal impact. And I have a motion by Clendenning, and I have a second by Roser. Discussion. Supervisor Valenstein. Uh, I would like to oppose or suggest an amendment uh, to point six in seven on page 46 and therefore to the therefores, where it says, if you test positive for COVID-19, stay home for 10 days from when symptoms began, notify your close contacts, and ask them to quarantine for 14 days from the last time they were around you. Um, I would like for that to say, ask them to quarantine as directed by the Wood County Health Officer, just due to the changes in the DHS regulations, or DHS suggestions, the, the same would follow for point number seven. Uh, it says stay home for 14 days. I'd like to stay, stay home as directed by the Wood County Health Officer. I will second that. Okay, I have a motion to advance and a second um, to the amendment by Supervisor Clendenny. Is there any discussion on the amendment? We're basically changing the days to the recommendation of the health officer. Any discussion on the amendment? Any discussion? I'm going to go to the board on this. Yeah. Okay. Please vote. I'll say yes. And then Curry and Ryan. Curry, yes. Thank you. Ryan, yes. Thank you, gentlemen. Lisa. Yes. I'm there. And that resolution passes 18, or that amendment passes 18 to 1. Now back to the resolution as amended. And is there any discussion on the resolution as amended? Any discussion? All right, seeing none, please vote. Again, Supervisors Bry, Hamilton, and Curry. Yes. Curry, yes. Thank you. And again, that resolution passed 18-1. Thank you. Back to the packet, page 47, beginning on 47 through 51, minutes of the Wood County Public Safety Committee of November 9th. That's 47 through 51. Pages 52 through 56, uh, information from the Humane Officer, 50 through Two through 56. Page 57 through 66 is wage comparison information. Uh, pages 57 through 66, and this was brought forward to deal with a resolution that's going to come forward here in a minute. Uh, then we have the October monthly report 
uh, from the Wood County Sheriff's Rescue Squad, beginning on 67 and going through page 72. On page 73, we have the Crime Stoppers report, 74 the canine, the Natural Resources Patrols on 75, uh, operations, uh, overtime comp totals at 76 and 77. Beginning on page 78 and going through page 81 is the Public Safety Committee meeting. Uh, this, uh, the Security Services Report out the door, 78 through 81. Beginning on page 82 and running through 94, various jail population uh, and monitoring information. That's 82 through 94. And then that brings me to the resolution I alluded to a minute earlier with the reason those wage that wage information was in there. Page 95 in the packet, I would ask the clerk to please read the resolution. This will be resolution 20-12-9. To address wage compression in the Wood County Sheriff's Department that is continuing due to the existing union contract and the implementation of the new wage plan. Fiscal note, total increase to wages and fringes estimated to be $33,789.45. No additional cost to the county. The required funds will be allocated from savings within the approved 2021 department budget. And I have a motion by Supervisor Clendenning, a second by Supervisor Fisher. Is there any discussion on this resolution? Any discussion? Supervisor Rosa. So I understand this wage compression. My and I understand that you know the, the public safety people are still <coughs> have negotiations going on. Did our wage study that we did address com um, compression in other departments with supervisors? I, I guess Human Resources is keeping an eye on that because I, I assume that compression occurs in some of the other departments and I just wanna make sure that we're not just addressing compression in the Sheriff's Department, that we keep an eye on compression in our other departments as well. Yeah, the answer is yes, and, and part of the reason here is that we have union contracts right. that we don't have in some other departments. Okay. So the answer is yes. Um, any further discussion? Any further discussion? All right, please vote. Yes. Hamilton with the yes, then Curry and Rye. Curry, yes. Thanks, Ken. And Bry is a yes. And that resolution passes unanimously. There is some additional information with that on pages 96 and 97. We go further into the packet, beginning on page 98, minutes of the seed committee from November 4th. That begins on 98, runs through 102, 98 through 102. Any questions there? Same committee, their meeting of December 2nd, beginning on 103 and running through 107. Any questions? Golden Sands Resource Conservation Development Council committees and various minutes, uh, beginning on page 108, and these run from September through November. And, and part of this, uh, the reason we get some of these is just you know, COVID-related stuff when we can get things in the packets and, and actually get meetings. But this runs from September through November. It's pages 108 through 129. 108 through 129. We have the North Central Itback Board minutes from September 4th, 130 through 132. We have the monthly update from UW Extension beginning on 133 and running through 138. Any questions on extension? Land and water conservation beginning on 139, running through 144. 139 through 144. Then we have a uh, monthly report from planning and zoning beginning on 145 and running through 149. The citizens groundwater group meeting 150 and 51. The end of the year county surveyors report 152 through 155. The economic department development recovery meetings, uh, these happen basically weekly. We have these uh, that and the PPE. Uh, these started on October 22nd, ran through November 19th, and that was the economic recovery minutes. 
the PPE minutes, uh, same thing November 3rd and November 17th, and pages 166 and 167. Anybody have any questions on any of that stuff that we just ran through? All right, that brings us to the resolution in the packet on page 168 brought forth by the seed committee. This will be resolution 20-12-10 to place on the Wood County April 2021 ballot a referendum question on clean water. Fiscal note, minimal cost to the county depending on the size of the ballot. Okay. I have a motion by Zerflu. I have a second by Fisher. Discussion. Any discussion? Is there any discussion on this resolution? Okay, I see none. Please vote. Hamilton, yes. <laughs> thanks, Brad. Yes. Ken, thanks. Right, yes. Thank you, gentlemen. That resolution passes 18 1. 18 1. Uh, next resolution in the packet brought forth by the seed committee. Uh, the resolution's on 169. There's a, a number of pieces of accompanying information that run through page 175. Resolution again on 169, I ask the clerk to please read the resolution. This will be resolution 20-12-11. Approve two zoning amendments to the Town of Grand Rapids zoning map. Fiscal note, no cost to Wood County. The Town of Grand Rapids is responsible for any costs associated with administering their town zoning ordinance. Hey, I have a motion by fire. I have a second by Zerflu. Is there any discussion on this resolution? Any discussion? All right, please vote. Hamilton, yes. Thank you. Agreed. Thank you. Bride, yes. Thank Supervisor Bride. Three in the affirmative there. That resolution passes unanimously. Thank you. Page 176 in your packet, Minutes of the Judicial and Legislative Committee on 176. This is the November 6th meeting running through page 179, 176 through 179. Uh, we just have, I don't know, something from the Animal Medical and Surgical Clinic here, Bill 180. And then on page 181, Minutes of the Judicial Legislative Committee of December 3rd, and that's 181, 2, and 3. The Criminal Justice Coordinator Ad Hoc Committee meeting from Wednesday, November 11th on 184, 185, and 186. Memos from Corp Council on 187 and 188. Additional memorandum on 189 and 190. And then on 191, uh, a final note from Corp Council. Anybody have any questions there? Register of Deeds monthly report uh, on page 192. And then that brings us to the next resolution of packet, page 193. This will be resolution 20-12-12. To create three positions within the criminal justice coordinator budget, including a criminal just manager, a criminal justice program specialist, and a criminal justice administrative support position. These positions are already funded through both grant and county levy funds via contract with Attic Correctional. The shift allows for cost savings. Fiscal note, savings in year one total $15,331.30. In year two, savings totals $13,265.41. Okay, and I have a motion by Supervisor Clendenning, a second by Supervisor LaFontaine. Any discussion on the resolution? Okay, Supervisor Roser. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, we've had a lot of discussions about FTEs and things like that over the last couple of months. And this is a perfect example of positions that start with being grant funded and then the slippery slope begins and, and all of that. So I, I just, I, in the Health and Human Services Committee, we have a lot of grant funded positions and we have asked our department heads to make certain that they do a lot of good documentation as to the savings and the benefit of having those. Because once these positions get all on tax levy, then I think that's the time that serious discussions take place about the return on investment of these uh, positions. 
And so this is a perfect example of how we just kind of slip right into more FTEs that are originally grant funded and then end up being on county tax dollars. So I guess my, um, my challenge is to make sure that people keep good documentation as to the benefits of these so that when they end up being totally on tax levy dollars, we can justify these positions to the public. Thank yeah, you. Supervisor Fisher, then I'll go to Supervisor Wagner. You know, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I appreciate uh, Supervisor Rosa's comments, um, and I agree with you. I think we do need to have good documentation, um, especially when positions are grant funded. Um, I think what we need to also keep in mind, though, is this: these contracted positions have actually been funded since 2007 through the TAG grant, um, and I do not see that changing. Now, obviously, it always could, and I think when that day comes, we have to look at the return on investment and see two things. One, if the grant funding has ended, that's one thing we need to look at, and two, even if the grant funding has ended, has it possibly saved us money in other areas? Because believe it or not, I'm not, I'm not against tax levy positions if we can prove that there's actual savings taking place in other parts of our budget. For example, ideally the program should um, be solving a problem with recidivism. We want people, we want less people, I should say, to be going to jail. And so I believe very, very passionately that we need to truly give these positions as much as we can with the hopes of actually saving money in the long run in our county budget by setting people up to succeed, to go through the program, and not be constantly in that vicious cycle of addiction. <laughs> so I appreciate your comments, but I just think we also need to keep in mind there is a savings here, and we need to also look at the ROI. So thank you. Professor Wagner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, one thing that I was originally against this for the same reasons that uh, Supervisor Rosa was talking about. This was slippery slope again. Here we go. Uh, I, I do know that uh, if that grant ever ends, I will be one of the first ones to stand up and say that the, uh, uh, the uh, Judiciary and Legislative Committee, which has oversight over the drug court and the, and the courts themselves, We'd have to come back and justify that those positions again if that grant ever ever ended. The one thing that made me change my vote on this, well, there are a couple things that made me change my vote. Number one is I support the drug court concept completely. It's doing a great thing for Wood County, and I think it's something that has to continue. That being said, the three positions we're talking about are the only staff that the judge has. Therefore, if we had done away with it, if we had done away with the if the grant went away. Or if we had done away with the, or not voted to uh, put it in these positions as we are, um, the drug court would have been handcuffed and been carrying out its mission. So basically, that that's why I supported this. But I agree, we're going to have to take a hard look at this uh, at grant funded positions in the future. And we said that I stood at that podium what a month ago and said that, and then the next thing I know, I get this resolution in front of me, and I won't tell you what I said under my breath. But it was, uh, it, it's been very bothersome to me in that case. Again, uh, I, uh, I will support this resolution. Uh, I hope we don't see any more of this coming out of the ad hoc committee because I think this is, I think I saw stuff in there that you wanted to do, uh, you wanted to put in other courts like a juvenile, a juvenile uh, mental health court, I believe it was. I think that's in there, and I think you also want your own oversight committee too. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, we'll be looking at those things in the future, and we'll be happy to look at it after the first of the year. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Clendenning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I don't see anything in there about having our over, oversight committee. Uh, uh, you know, this is all still in the planning stage, and, and yes, we have an ad hoc committee until March 1st, so after that, it'll be up to the Judicial and Legislative Committee. I, I don't think there's anything hidden here that we're doing something wrong or, 
or intend to do something wrong. Uh, drug court um, been in existence here. I think we were one of the first ones to have drug court. And if the funding ever stopped, I would suppose we would not have drug court. But uh, yes, I, I agree with that. But I, I don't see, you know, anything hitting in that ad hoc committee that that is a surprise. And and uh, whatever comes out of that ad hoc committee definitely goes before the full uh, committee and then the full county board. Thank you. Anybody else out there? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to test the pa patience of the vice chair. That's why I'm rising. Just kidding. Uh, my two <laughs> things that I, I still have doubts about is uh, two years from now, it seems some people put stock in the thing that a grant will always be there. And having written a few in my 22 years chief of police, I know they're not always there. And the other biggest concern I had with this uh, resolution, Bill just answered when he assured me, there's nothing hidden in there like a separate oversight committee for the position, that it will remain with judicial and legislative. I'm happy with it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next, Supervisor Fisher. I can be very patient, so thank you. Why don't everybody get a first shot at this before we went back to second? Uh, I just, I want to echo uh, what Supervisor Clendenin shared. Um, I, I don't recall any conversation of an oversight committee. Um, this will stay under judicial and legislative. The ad hoc committee is scheduled to end, I believe, February 1st. Um, so there's no, there's no discussion of oversight committee. Early on, there was, there was discussion of where this position would report to. So I don't know if that's what Supervisor Wagner is referring to, but I just want to uh, make sure that the body knows that there is no discussion of changing the oversight committee. Thank you. Further discussion? Further discussion? Mr. Chairman? It's Brad. Go ahead, Brad. I raised my hand, but you didn't see it. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Anyhow, uh, this would be no different than if, if we left it alone and didn't do anything, and it would still be in the uh, still be the hands of outside contractors. If we, if we lose the grant, we have to figure out whether we want to do it. This is a cost, cost effective. If it is cost effective, it will be continued. If it's not, it's not. It's not. It's, 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 I don't understand all the, all the uh, debate on it. But uh, it, as far as I'm concerned, I would, I would be looking at it whether or not we, we brought it back. Because it was, it was brought by the uh, United committee to uh, check it out and see if See if we can bring it out. <coughs> what we're saying, fifteen thousand the first year, thirteen thousand the second year. If we have a problem, then we look at it. So, thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Hamilton. If you could raise your hand a little higher next time, yeah, mm -hmm. might be able to see it. All right. Any further discussion? Any further, Supervisor Clendenning? Are you? You're halfway up there. All right. Can you see me, Brad? <laughs> uh, okay. Um, yes. Uh, just. Just to go back, you know, I, 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 I'm worried about somebody thinking that there's there's rumors that we're going to discontinue this, and, and it is not. And it is March 1st is when, when this ad hoc committee, everything we do goes back to the Judicial and Legislative Committee. You know, it's, um, there, there's a lot of things in the planning here, and I, 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 would, I don't want people to derail what we're doing just by a rumor that we might be thinking of something else. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Any further discussion? We already turned. All right, I guess you please vote. Hamilton, yes. Curry and Ryan? Yes. Thank you, Ken Curry. Curry, yes. Ryan, right, yes. Thank you. That res thank you, gentlemen. That resolution passed unanimously. As we get, as we move forward here, just, sorry, just to make a quick comment, you know, we, I oftentimes get the opportunity to sit with the Local Government Institute, and we, we have a big whiteboard in, in our offices, and it basically starts with what would we never do, what must we do, you know, as we throw ideas at, at different problems and situations. And it's amazing how often what we never do, what we would never ever do, ends up in what we should do. So I guess as we move forward as a board and we look at things, we always say, you know, what will, what will it mean tomorrow? How do we adapt and what do we do? So 
I really appreciate the conversation. I think we touched on a lot of the issues on this, this recently handled resolution uh, that we deal with every day. And, and things do change. And we have to look at it on an annual basis or even more regularly uh, as we tend to try to improve programs. So appreciate the conversation and appreciate that thought process that sometimes it isn't thinking outside the box. It's forget the box. It's, you know, how do we approach things from a, a different perspective? Uh, this next resolution on page 195, I'm pretty sure this was drafted by our clerk, but it says it came from the Judicial and Legislative Committee. So, Trent, if you would please read the resolution. This will be resolution 20-12-13. To recognize the work done by municipal clerks and poll workers in Wood County, in particular in processing all of the votes in the November 3rd, 2020 election. Fiscal note, none. It is worth noting that if clerks and poll workers botch up any aspect of the vote counting, that many kinds of additional costs to the county could flow from such mistakes. And I have a motion by Supervisor LaFontaine and a second by Supervisor Clendenning. Is there any discussion on this resolution? Didn't think there'd probably be any. All right. You want to get that ready to vote, Trent? All right, if you please vote. Hold it, yes. Courage, yes. Supervisor Bride, thank you. Virtual votes are in. That passes unanimously. Next resolution in packet also brought forth by the JNL committee on page beginning on page 196 through 198 with the additional information that goes with it. Trent, would you please read the resolution? This will be resolution 20-12-15. To request the Wisconsin Counties Association to formally support nonpartisan redistricting by the state legislature and pursue legislation thereon. Fiscal note, no cost. Hold it. <laughs> you skipped the resolution. We can no, go in that order if you want. Did you number it already? The next one oh, the I'm sorry. Should we take that one? No, no. let's not take that one. All right, forget it. We just, you know, we just passed a resolution saying what a good job they do. Yeah. <laughs> Workers, not one, the one, one minute later, the only mistake he's ever made. Uh, First all of all, Sir right. I see you looking at me, so shut up. Okay. Second of all, resolution. Let's let's do a rewind and go back to page one ninety six. Resolution. I'm just anxious to get this meeting done with. Uh, resolution twenty dash twelve dash fourteen to approve a face mask use policy in county owned buildings. Fiscal note: no significant cost. Okay, I have a motion by Clendenning and a second by Zerflu. Discussion? Supervisor Hanson. I'll be brief. I feel like I could go on about this for a very long time, but we don't have that much time anymore. Um, I support this really strongly. For me, this comes down to respect. Um, my mask protects me, yours, I'm sorry, my mask protects you. Your mask protects me. And I think that we need to do a good job of protecting the employees in our county buildings. Um, and I think that we need to be good role models for the county as to how we want to treat each other. Thank you. Further discussion? Any further discussion? I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I will support this resolution. Um, I was uh, disappointed in a bit of the language. Um, as someone who has consulted with healthcare professionals and has been told to not wear a mask, it's very difficult because as I read it, I feel I have to wear one to even enter a county building or participate in this meeting. And even today, as I've been sitting here, I've been struggling a great deal. Um, I do want to be respectful and I do appreciate that. Um, but I would have hoped there would have been some language to acknowledge some exemption. I haven't overly publicized it, my own reasons, uh, for personal reasons, but um, I do feel there should be some exemption. And I know even from talking to another supervisor, it's hard to know who truly has a medical exemption. And I understand that, uh, but as someone who has it, truly has it, uh, it is very difficult. And so, again, I will support it, but I was disappointed with the language. Thank you. Supervisor Clendenin. Yes, Mr. Chair. Of course, I, I very much support of this. 
I, I want to say one thing that uh, I think as leaders, and and I, I bring this up at every county board meeting, uh, why isn't people wearing masks? Why aren't county board people wearing masks? You know, we're the leaders, we're the exempt part of it. Yeah, and, and I don't understand why. I, I, I could see if we did not have uh, WebEx, like the three people that are on that today, I got a lot of phone calls about people, I'm going to say four phone calls, about this issue. And that is, boy, I would like to attend that meeting, but uh, I, I get too emotional, and uh, I, I, I understood that I couldn't attend your meeting on the 15th because it's uh, public comment can only be made inside uh, there. You, you can't make public comment from outside of it. And they, they think that is that was terrible, that the public could not make comment. However, when I got one on the mask and the fa fact that they're not coming to the courthouse because because of this resolution, it requires a mask. And their constitutional right is they don't want to have to wear a mask if they don't want to. Well, I said, if you come in the courthouse now and this resolution passed, you have to wear one. Or you have to have a medical exemption. Or in a particular incident, the, the, the chairman of the county board, the chairperson, the administrative coordinator can exempt you from it. So, so that's the way it is. I, I think this is real important. I, I, I really, not, not, not so much because of my age, because I, I have people in my family that, that will not wear masks. I have uh, one of my sons that will, if, if they, they require a mask to go into Walgreens drugstore, he will not go into it or never patronize it again. Uh, so that, that's what I deal with. But when it comes to government that we are, I think this is real important. Thank you. Any further discussion? Supervisor, sir. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I support this uh, policy of using a face mask, but I do have a concern about our department heads in the courthouse. It is quite obvious that some business conducted, I'll pick on my favorite person, our county clerk, that there's function in his office that you cannot have a mask on to get them done. So the only thing that's still pulling on me that I'm not 100% for it, but I will vote for it, is, is this going to infringe on department heads, if you follow my drift? So I just wanted to make that <laughs> I'm going to try not to weigh in either way on this. The answer, the answer to that is it should. Uh, we, we tried to create enough latitude in this where uh, employees within their workspace, and we try to define that as a workspace, not just a, an office, uh, with department head uh, approval, uh, have the ability to have those masks down. It's basically interaction with the public within the hallways, uh, and there have been exemptions that we have granted based on medical or other reasons. Uh, there's not a lot. You know, it's kind of, I guess, like the speed limit. You know, you're supposed to go 55. Some people go 56. Some do 90. I guess we're trying to stop the ones that are doing 90. Uh, <laughs> the ones that are going 56, uh, you know, we create a little attitude. So uh, I think Supervisor Balance that I touched on it, said, you know, you have the opportunity, and I think Supervisor Clendenning said the same thing. You can pick or choose what businesses you patronize, where you go, and, you know, based on what masking requirement they have. But, if you're somebody who is compromised, there's only one courthouse. There's only one place you can go. You can't shop at a different one. And so, you know, we've tried to create balance, is what we're trying to do. So anyway, I hope that answered the question a little bit. Back to discussion. Back to discussion. All right, I see no more discussion, then I would ask you to please vote. Oh, then yes. Supervisor Bry? Bry, yes. Thank you. That resolution passed 17-2. 17-2. Next resolution in packet, page 199. Deja vu. Resolution 20-12-15. To request the Wisconsin Counties Association to formally support nonpartisan redistricting by the state legislature and pursue legislation thereon. Fiscal note, no cost. 
All right, I have a motion by fire, I have a second by Clendenning. Any discussion on this one? Any discussion? All right, seeing none, please vote. Hamilton, yes. Curry, yes. Supervisor Bryan? Bryan, yes. Okay. And that resolution passes unanimously. All right, back in the packet here on page 200. Yes. Minutes of the Highway Infrastructure Recreation Committee, 200 and 201. There are minutes from December 3rd on 202, 3, and 4. Monthly update from the Highway Commissioner, beginning on 205, and that runs through page 214, 205 and 214. I have uh, various information here from Park and Forestry, beginning on 215 and running through 219. Their um, revenue reports, expenses, and such. Any questions there? The Property Information Technology Committee meeting of December 7th, beginning at 2.20, running through 2.24. Questions there. Letter of comments from uh, Ruben, our facilities manager, Ruben Van Tassel on 2.25. We have the monthly report from IT beginning at 226 and running through 230, 226 through 230. Minutes, the October minutes from the Aging Disability Resource Center, uh, October 8th beginning at 231, running through 234. And then minutes of the McMillan Memorial Library Board, 235 and 236. South Central Library uh, System, their Board of Trustees, 237-238. And minutes of the University Commission meeting from August 20th on 239 and 240. That takes me through the packet. Is there anything else that needs to come before the board? Supervisor Reserve. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and I want to give a special thank you to all the uh, supervisors and to our county clerk, I've been picking on him all day for volunteering to lead prayers during 2021. And the uh, fee for that, your pay will be the same as last year. Mm -hmm. an a boy or an Anna girl. Or whatever. Thank you. Okay, this is, uh, I appreciate it. You know, this is, we get to this kind of special time of year. Uh, you know, we do have a lot of people that are, are you know, using some vacation and are off uh, as we approach the end of the year, although it, it isn't an annual basis. It's from their data higher, I guess, their anniversary. But, um, you know, I, I'd ask you all just to, you know, take a minute, take a minute, reflect on this past year, which is has just been extraordinary. I mean, if you would have told me last year, uh, I was out in D.C. when this COVID situation kind of broke. You know, I was out there in January, February, where there were two or three cases in the nation. If you would have asked me if we would be in this situation, you know, in June or July, I would have said no. You know, and here we are, end of the year. Uh, still dealing with a lot of these issues as we meet virtually, uh, try to meet in person. Uh, obviously, events have been canceled or rescheduled all over. Uh, it, it's been difficult. So I just ask you to continue to have patience with everybody, continue to do what we do, and, uh, and I want to thank you as this year ends. So nothing else to come before the board? All right, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Hamilton, Supervisor Hamilton. Thank you, sir. Do you get anything from the legal Wisconsin municipalities that you can I, I do I do get some updates from them, yes I do. There's an opportunity to get grants and training one came in December twenty twenty. Um, I'm gonna send it uh, sorry, I'm gonna send it to her that clerk run it all around and, and people can uh, give it to whoever they want. There's a lot of stuff in this thing that is uh, that is I think it's gonna be uh, good for everybody, but uh, uh, I'll just send it to her and that way if you would send it to everybody else. With that I move to it. All right. He moved. I guess Superintendent Wagner seconded, even if I declared. All in favor, signify by aye. Aye. All right. All right. We're doubly adjourned. Thank you very much.